In this screencast, we'll see how to interact with external services that have RESTful APIs. And I'm on the API documentation page here for the movie database, TMDB. Uh, and by the way, I'll just point out there's a link over here that's going to be useful later, wrappers and libraries. So we're not going to follow it just now. If we take a look at some of the API methods exposed by TMDB, for example, let's check out the movie search method. The API documentation tells us that to call this method, all we have to do is construct a URI that includes the name of the method, movie.search, and it looks like it has some other arguments. The type specifies how we want to get our results back, and we're going to use XML just because it's easy to see the structure of XML in a browser. So there's that. The API key, most services that export a RESTful API require anybody who's going to use it to register for their own key. So when we construct an example, we'll use the key that I registered for. Usually getting an API key is free, and it just allows the service to track if anybody is abusing the API. And the title of the movie that we want to search for, so this can pretty much be any string. So that's pretty much it. Uh, now, of course, if we just copy and paste this exact URI over to another window here, we're going to get an error because we were supposed to substitute a valid API key. So let's now go to this happy email where I was approved for an API key and we're going to copy that and paste it into the URI. So all we've done is change the API key field and also I don't like the Transformers movie so I'm going to change the search terms over here to hardware. We'll resubmit and now we actually got a real response. We have an XML document and Firefox allows us to collapse the internal elements of the XML document. And you can see that we got two matches on search terms equals hardware. We can open up each one of these and see a bunch of nested tags. This looks a lot like XHTML, but it's just plain old XML, uh, containing the more detailed information about each matching movie. Now let's take a look at another API method to see how we would use some of this returned information. For example, there's the movie get info method. The movie get info method will give us more details about a particular movie if we provide the ID of that movie from TMDB. So going back to our search results, we can see that 11309 is the ID number for this first movie whose title happens to be hardware. So let's construct this RESTful URI. Again, I'm going to copy and paste just to make things easy. And again, we're going to substitute my real API key uh, into the URI. And we're going to add 11309. That was the ID number of that first matching movie called hardware. And here's the result. Now we've got a good deal more information about the movie, including some keywords, countries where it was released, a bunch of images from promotional posters of the movie, and so on. So pretty much, you've seen that the way to call a RESTful API is to construct a URI. Typically, the URI is going to have some arguments whose documentation you'll find in the API developers pages. It usually also has to include some sort of a key which authorizes you to make the request. And the response that you get back might be in a format like this, XML. There's also formats like JSON, which we'll meet a little bit later, but they're all pretty similar. And lastly, uh, let's remember how this relates to using the RESTful resource pattern. If we were navigating the TMDB site as a human surfer, we would have to do a sequence of actions, like searching for a list of movies matching hardware, then clicking on one of them to get details. But the REST design pattern says that any action the site can perform should be identifiable as a single request. So it's important for the URIs for search and get movie info to be distinct. So this means that even if we're designing our sites primarily around a human user, if we follow the RESTful resource pattern and make sure that each action the site can perform has its own distinct URI, that makes it easy for us if we decide that we want to expose a RESTful API later.